Hello, welcome to part two of the introduction to Proust's video on injections, surjections, and bijections. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. Now we're going to look at a couple exercises to help you understand injections, surjections, and bijections. Your first exercise is to find a function f from the reals to the reals that is on to but not one to one, and then find a function uh, g from the reals to the reals that is one to one but not on to. Now, in this particular case, I really want to emphasize that both the domain and the codomain are the reals. When you're coming up with your examples, please don't change these things. Um, it's easy to come up with examples if you restrict your domain, but I don't want you to restrict your domain. Um, also, all of the examples should be examples that you've seen in a pre-calculus class. But of course, you can come up with strange ones if you want, but um, I'm just saying that there won't be you can look at just ones you know. You don't have to come up with anything sophisticated. The second exercise is about polynomials. So show that the polynomial x minus one times x minus two is not an injection. And in fact, prove that if a polynomial has more than one root, then it is not injective. If you draw the picture of this, it should be obvious. Then even further, prove that even functions are not injective and to remind you, the definition of an even function is for every x in the domain, f of x is equal to f of minus x. Finally, going even further, prove that any even degree polynomial will not be an injection. Let's look at one way to see functions as arrow diagrams, which will really help uh, visualize what injections and surjections look like. So I want you to write, find, or draw four different arrow diagrams that go from the set 1, 2, 3 to the set 4, 5, 6, so that the first one is a bijection, the second one is not injective, the third one is not a function, and the fourth one is one to is sorry, is not onto, but it is one to one. And as a warning, the fourth one is a trick question. So in each of these, I want you to draw an arrow diagram that does this. And then I want you to think about what do these things look like? What's the essential property of it? Being not injective and being not a function should be very visual. It should look like something particular. It'll also help you um, distinguish between these concepts. Oftentimes, students confuse what it means to be a function with what it means to be injective. But these two things are happening in different places. Being not injective means that two different things go to one thing. Being not a function means one thing goes to two things. So they sound very similar, but they should look very different. As an example of what I'm asking for, here's an example of something that is a bijection. So here's an arrow diagram from one, two, three to four, five, six, and it's both injective and surjective. Let's end by talking about some better definitions for injective and surjective. So for all of these things, f will be a function from a to b. The following things are equivalent, or sometimes we say tfae. f is a is a one-to-one -one function. Another way of saying this is for every two things in the domain, if they're different, then their outputs are different. And I want to stress that this is happening in the domain. So you have two different things in the domain, and this is happening in the codomain or the range. So this is happening in B, and this part is happening in A. Another way of saying what is actually happening here is if you have two different things, they go to two different things. So sometimes people call this being two to two. So you have two different things in the domain and they get sent to two different things in the codomain. Another version of one to one is this. For all a1, a2 in the domain, if their outputs are equal, then their inputs were equal. How do these two things relate to each other? 
Well, these two things are the contrapositive of each other. So then they're, nat they're naturally logically equivalent. It turns out that number three is going to be the quote unquote best version for us. Um, it's going to be the best for us because it involves just equalities. And when we're proving things, using equalities is going to be handier than dealing with inequalities. Also, the definition of one-to-one -one being everything has at most one thing that hits it is nice for thinking about, but it's hard for proving things. So this is going to be the algebraic one that we use most often. Now let's look at a better definition for onto or surjective. The following are equivalent. F is onto, the range of F is equal to the codomain of F. So this is how we usually think about what it means to be onto. And in fact, this is what we looked at earlier in the course. Finally, we can combine the two definitions of being a bijection and being a surjection to help us with uh, understanding the definition. For each B in B, there is exactly one A in A that hits it. So this is combining the at most and at least parts of the definition of one to one and onto to get there is exactly one. Now, typically we won't use this definition for proving things, but it's very handy in the countability section because it tells us exactly why bijection is the type of function we care about. Now let's take some time to reflect. What is the difference between the horizontal line test and the vertical line test? What is the difference between checking that something is a function versus checking that it is an injection? What do the following things look like on an arrow diagram? A surjection, not an injection, and not a surjection. Thank you very much and have a great day.